Ending months of speculation, Verizon finally announced its plans to buy internet giant Yahoo. So joining us now to talk about the deal is Mark Spoonauer, editor-in-chief over at Tom's Guide. So first of all, Mark, Yahoo, it was sought after by just a handful of companies. It wasn't like it was a very wide bidding process. <laughs> right. What are your thoughts about Verizon being the ultimate winner here? They've been handicapped as the ultimate winner for quite some time now. Yeah, a lot of people predicted this because it was the most natural fit among all the suitors out there. And it's partly because Verizon has done this before with AOL. So in this case, they're going after yet another media company, but there's a lot of questions about what are they going to do with this asset and how is it going to be combined with AOL? All right, so let's answer those questions. And yeah. I mean, as we talk about this, where do you see Verizon in the, in the next 12 months, 24 months down the line? Will it become a big player like its rivals in digital? We know that a lot of the driver behind this is the whole idea of ad technology, ad right. tech, how they, <laughs> how they stack up in the space. We know that Google and Facebook are dominant players. Yep. here. How does this deal really add to Verizon's overall creation of shareholder wealth? Sure. I, I think it comes down to what Verizon is trying to do is get more eyeballs and then convert them either into subscribers to their services or get them just to be customers in terms of ad revenue. And as you just mentioned, Facebook and Google combined from about half or a little more than half in the digital advertising market. When you combine AOL and, uh, and Yahoo and what Verizon is doing, it's a little over 5%. So they certainly have a long way to go. Uh, but when you think about what Verizon is working on and what's on the horizon in terms of 5G services, the Internet of Things, and integrating their network into more aspects of our lives, I think there's an opportunity for them to leverage the additional eyeballs they're going to be getting from Yahoo in the terms of, like, a, but it's about a, a billion per month, and 600 million of those are mobile. So a lot of the trend lines are certainly in their direction, but there's a lot of uh, headwinds, too, when it comes to competition. Can, can we just follow up on that point before we move on here for just a second? Yeah. They're, they're paying $4.8 billion for this. They paid around a, a little less than that for, for the AOL properties as well. Yeah. So they've, they've spent almost, I mean, we'll call it maybe about $9, $10 billion on this type of stuff for brand names in what some view as older internet names or older internet properties like an AOL or like a Yahoo. What exactly do they hope to accomplish with that given <laughs> the price that they paid for it? Was it too much to pay that kind of money for it or is this a value proposition for them? Well, I, I guess, you know, in Verizon's world, they have a lot more money in the bank and this is almost like a drop in a bucket for them. And when you think about where Yahoo was, it was like 125 million so many years ago and now it's five. So it's really not that much for them, but, but you're right. It's about what are they going to do with these legacy brands and there were some questions about whether or not they were going to keep Yahoo as a brand. So apparently not only are they keeping Yahoo, but they're keeping Marissa Mayer as well on a CEO, at least for now. But I think what Verizon is going to try to do is develop new brands as well that maybe leverage some of these assets that they have. So for example, their Go90 video service that targets teens is bringing in content from NFL and Verizon is already a partner with them, Major League Baseball and Vice. So it's about how do they spin these properties into tantalizing value propositions for millennials? We know who Tim Armstrong is, mm -hmm. former AOL chief, now basically runs that internet type business for Verizon. We know who Marissa Meyer is. She's the CEO of Yahoo. But right. there's another woman at the center of all of this, and she's not exactly a household name, but she's <laughs> becoming more and more so. Her name is Marnie Walden, right. the woman behind the deal and the previous one. She's Verizon's president of product innovation and new business. So what else do we know about Walden? Where does she fit in the overall scheme of this combined company? How will she be running things, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think her number one challenge is getting Marissa Mayer and Tim Armstrong to get along and how they go about integrating AOL and Yahoo, because uh, it was Mayer who I think rebuffed earlier advances from Tim Armstrong earlier. And we're going to have to see how well they integrate those two. But her overall goal is to get Verizon to stop being a dumb pipe or being known for that and for adding value in terms of services, uh, whether it be advertising or 5G into the home, uh, that, that get them beyond just mere content. So content just has to be one part of that. And she's also in, responsible and related to this when it comes to Internet of Things and telematics and connected cars. So how is she going to fit all of these pieces together, I think, is going to be the number one thing for her going forward. It's certainly going to be a huge part of the story, the executives, the management team that will be running all of these properties going forward. Mark Spoonauer, thank you so much for joining us. That's Mark Spoonauer, Editor-in-Chief over at Tom's Guide. And thanks for watching. I'm Dominic Chu. Have a great day.
Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.